Philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche was born on October 15, 1844 in Rocken Bay, Lutzen, Germany. In his brilliant but relatively brief career, he published numerous major works of philosophy, including Twilight of the Idols and Thus Spoke Zarathustra. In the last decade of his life, he suffered from insanity. He died on August 25, 1900. His writings on morality and ethics in modern civilization made him a leader for further thought and left behind a legacy that influenced many major thinkers and writers of the 20th century. Rockin Bay Lutzen was, at the time, a small village in Prussia, which would come to be part of present-day Germany. It is said that Nietzsche was named after King Frederick William IV of Prussia, who shared the same birthday as Nietzsche. Nietzsche's father, ironically, was a devout Lutheran preacher and died abruptly when Nietzsche was just four years old from falling off of a ladder. Nietzsche and his younger sister Elizabeth were raised by their mother, Francisca. Ludwig Joseph, born in 1848, was the couple's second son. After his father's death from brain ailment in 1849, like with Joseph died the next year at age two. The family then moved to Nuremberg, where they would live with Nietzsche's grandmother for a short time before her death. Nietzsche attended a private preparatory school in Nuremberg, and then received a classical education at the prestigious Kultforta School. After graduating in 1864, he attended the University of Bonn for two semesters. He transferred to the University of Leipzig, where he studied philology, a combination of literature, linguistics, and history. He was strongly influenced by the writers of philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer. During his time in Leipzig, he began a friendship with the composer Richard Wagner, whose music he greatly admired. In 1869, Nietzsche took a position as professor of classical philology at the University of Basel in Switzerland. During his professorship, he published his first books, The Birth of Tragedy, 1872, and Human, All Too Human, 1878. He also began to distance himself from classical scholarship as well as the teachings of Schopenhauer and to take more interest in the values underlying modern-day civilization. By this time, his friendship with Wagner has had deteriorated. Suffering from a nervous disorder, he resigned from his post at Basel in 1879. For much of the following decade, Nietzsche lived in seclusion, moving from Switzerland to France to Italy when he was not staying at his mother's house in Nuremberg. However, this was also a highly productive period for him as a thinker and writer. One of his most significant works, Thus Spoke Zarathustra, was published in four volumes between 1883 and 1885. Nietzsche's writing, Thus Spoke Zarathustra, was the first to discuss concepts such as the will to power and the eternal return, which occupy a major portion of his philosophy. If you could live your life over with the same exact results, would you do it? Nietzsche here claims that suffering is an inevitable condition of life. Nietzsche's will to power was a major existential accomplishment. Focusing on issues of the human condition and ontological questions, his application of desire to the work examines the underlying causes of human action. He also wrote Beyond Good and Evil, published in 1886, The Genealogy of Morals, 1887, and The Twilight of Idols, in 1889. After some time, Nietzsche took leave from academic involvement to travel with what would come to be known as the Winter Plain Commune. The commune consisted of some close friends of Nietzsche, including Louis Andreas Salome a psychoanalytical philosopher who he was said to have a falling out with after confessing his mad love for her. Although Nietzsche openly writes about concepts such as love, Andrea Salemi was one of the few women that Nietzsche had a personal relationship to. On Truth and Lies in a Non-Moral Sense is an initially unpublished work of Frederick Nietzsche written in 1873, shortly after the birth of tragedy. It addresses epistemological questions such as truth, and how individuals come to know what they know. From On Truth and Lies in a Non-Moral Sense, we are given the fable. Nietzsche writes, Once upon a time, in some out-of-the-way corner of that universe, which is dispersed into numberless twinkling solar systems, there was a star upon which clever beasts invented knowing. That was the most arrogant and mendacious minute of world history. But nevertheless, it was only a minute. After nature had drawn a few breaths, the star cooled and congealed, and the clever beast had to die. One might invent such a fable, and yet he would still not have adequately illustrated how miserable, how shadowy, how transient, how aimless and arbitrary the human intellect looks within nature. There were eternities in which it did not exist, and when it is all over with the human intellect, nothing will have happened. That's Nietzsche in 1873. Welcome to the now, a time in which the modern human being has become a strolling spectator of life, who lives in the midst of a cosmopolitan carnival of gods. 
a time when even the greatest events of world history can hardly detain such a human for more than a fleeting moment. We are no longer capable of holding on to the sublime, for we have turned our backs upon that which is truly important. As tragedy is traded for aesthetic beauty, the recognition of the narrowness of life falls into the backdrop to be forever forgotten. For Nietzsche, the human intellect is nothing special in the grand scheme of geological time. To believe otherwise is to fall vulnerable to the ego. The goal of language is to create an accurate depiction of reality. The limits of human language make any question of metaphysics largely irrelevant. Although Nietzsche's work dealt with a multiplicity of issues ranging from morality to love, he is primarily considered to be the father of modern existentialism, or the study of existence. In his works of the 1880s, Nietzsche developed the central points of his philosophy. One of these was his famous statement that God is dead, a rejection of Christianity as a meaningful force in contemporary life. Others were his endorsement of self-perfection through a creative drive and a will to power, and his conception of a superman, overman, ubermensch, an individual who strives to exist beyond conventional categories of good and evil, master and slave. Nietzsche suffered a collapse in 1889 while living in Turin, Italy. The last decade of his life was spent in a state of mental incapacitation. The reason for his insanity is still unknown. Although his stories have attributed to causes as varied as syphilis, an inherited brain disease, a tumor, and overuse of sedative drugs. After a stay in an asylum, Nietzsche was cared for by his mother in Numburg and his sister in Weimar, Germany. He died in Weimar on August 25, 1900. Towards the end of his life, many of his works were left unpublished, and it wasn't until later that his sister decided to release the writings. Many scholars have criticized Nietzsche for having involvement in the Nazi party. However, Nietzsche's personal writings reveals that he extremely desired to dissent against their doctrine. Nietzsche was regarded as a major influence on 20th century philosophy, theology, and art. His ideas on individuality, morality, and the meaning of existence contribute to the thinking of philosophers Martin Heidegger, Jacques Derrida, Michel Foucault, Carl Jung, and Sigmund Freud, two of the founding figures of psychiatry, and writers such as Albert Camus, Jean-Paul Sartre, Thomas Mann, and Hermann Hesse. Less beneficially, certain aspects of Nietzsche's work were used by the Nazi party of the 1930s and 40s as a justification for its activities. This selective, misleading use of his work has somewhat darkened his reputation for later audiences. Although many view Nietzschean philosophy negatively, his work demonstrated true qualities of free thinking and leadership. Indeed, Frederick Nietzsche left behind a legacy of thought that is still being built upon in modern academic institutions across the world today and continues to impact the way that individuals who study his thought approach everyday existence.